Cassiopeia, so uh, Faker loves banning out the GG champions, and we've actually seen three Gs in his champion bans previously. That's to make sure that Cassiopeia doesn't get out of control. A Garen, Galio, and Gragas ban there for Kane, so a lot of Gs out there as far as the ban phase goes. So I'm not sure exactly what's up with that, but when it comes to the champion picks, it's gonna be an Azir versus Cannon matchup. Now, I'm really excited to see how Kane plays Azir because we've already seen a lot of Azir play from, well, spoiler alert, the guy that actually advanced to the playoffs previously. Ahead of this, from our first best of three, it was uh, GBM. So Gank by Mom had a lot of success as Azir, and he will advance for the playoffs through bracket B3. But for bracket B-4, it's all coming down to Kane versus Faker. Kennen versus uh, Azir. And I don't think we'll actually get the opportunity to check out the uh, runes and masteries. We're just going to hop into game here in just a second. But Faker coming out in his second best of three of the night. Won a nail-biting Lee Sin 1v1. To qualify here for this uh, finals matchup. Uh, whereas Kane put in work as, like we said, Leona and AP Nasus to be able to join Faker in what is going to be a battle for elimination. Winner is into the uh, playoff bracket loser will unfortunately be going home so uh this is uh this is a lot of excitement behind this honestly you have to kind of give a small advantage to faker but with kane playing as impressively as he is uh he's gonna give faker a run for his money and especially on azir champion that we've already seen a ton of success being played by uh, gbm earlier on tonight It'll be interesting to see what kane's azir can do versus faker's kennen Kennen kind of been out of the meta for a little bit, but as far as the 1v1 goes, you don't have to worry about getting ganked. You can just go full on harass mode if you want to, and it'll be interesting to see. I, I don't won't get confirmation for this whether or not Faker went with uh, Ragan's 30-0-0 Kennen build. Probably not, and I feel fairly certain with that prediction. But at the same time, it's going to be interesting to see Faker bring out Kennen, a champion that we've only seen once here in the Solo King, and actually had a pretty poor showing from what I can remember. So, what can Faker do with Kennen versus Azir, one of the strongest 1v1 champions here so far in the Solo King? It's going to be exciting to watch, and of course, any game with Faker in it is going to be exciting to watch and see how he does here. Once again, this is the Solo King. If you guys are new to the tournament, if you're wondering what's going on, this is a 1v1 tournament featuring a lot of uh, your favorite LCK players and uh, it's a pretty awesome 1v1 action. Uh, you win by either taking your opposing turret, killing your opposing laner, or being 10 CS up at 100 CS mark. So once you hit 100 CS, you have to have a 10 CS advantage after that in order to be able to pick up the win. We've seen a couple of CS victories over the course of the weeks so far in this tournament. We'll see which victory conditions are chosen here in Game number one of our final best of three series of the night to determine which player will advance to the playoff brackets out of the group stage. It's Faker versus Kane. We'll have game number one of that best of three coming up here in just a little bit. So stick around. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, Faker versus Kane in game one of their best of three matchup. Let's go ahead and get into game. Do you want to give a quick update? I uh, saw the champion names, but with the player icon switched, I did miss call which player was playing which champion. So, welcome to the Solo King. This is a Korean 1v1 tournament featuring all of your favorite players, teams, and champions from this season of champions. Currently into our uh, final best of three of the night as Faker on Azir will be taking on Kane's Kennen. So, some alliteration there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this works out, and apologies for uh, the champion player mismatch before this, but it'll be interesting to see how this works out, considering the summoner spell is chosen, Ignite Flash for both laners, uh, of course, on opposite keys, Faker running Flash on D, uh, well, it's Flash on F, whereas Kane is, of course, committing the uh, 
cardinal sin of running flash on D with ignite on F. So, I don't know. Maybe he's going to dash his way to victory. But either way, uh, it'll be uh, no uh, no sustained starts for either player. No cloth armor, five health potions, or anything like that for uh, for Kane. It's just going to be Doran's ring with some uh, total biscuits of rejuvenation. A long sword health potion start there, which I guess is fairly sustain heavy for Kane. He's walking forward and <laughs> stops Baker's recall. <laughs> I guess Yordles are meant to be annoying. Kane might actually go for the uh, the stop of the recall by walking over around the uh, <laughs> around the Raptor pit. But was unfortunately unable to stop that. So uh, Faker heads back to base. Won't be picking up any extra sustain, just healing off that early harass. And coming into the lane phase... Traditionally, we've seen Azirs have difficulty with AD carries that can shove them in early on. But Faker's Azir uh, probably shares a few characteristics with Ganked by Mom's Azir, which was more than capable of winning his matchups earlier on today. Throwing out the uh, Sand Soldier in the middle of the creep wave, but honestly, Kane's shoved it in a little bit more quickly than the faker would have liked and while he is going to lose one cs should be able to hit most of these additional cs under turret no he's actually going to miss not one but two cs under turret that's uh i think that's more than two yeah he missed four cs out of the first wave faker having some struggles here versus a kane's cannon who is all too willing to just continue auto attacking shove this wave in over and over again and start to get off to a little bit of an early cs lead of course i can't emphasize enough how quickly small CS leads can turn into big ones because uh, specifically determining like the play style that the player wants to play so uh, for Kane on cannon he's gonna be looking for a little bit more of an aggressive harass based style whereas Faker I feel like less so harassing Kane as it is just putting on enough pressure so that he can keep the wave from getting shoved into his turret One strategy to keep the wave from shoving into your turret is to go for this like consistent auto attack harass because when you auto attack, the enemy minions actually hit your body, they don't hit your minions. So your minions survive a little bit longer and can counter push more effectively. Now, that being said, it's actually kind of terrible to just take free damage from minions, but if it means getting the wave in a better situation, oh, level three gonna dash on in there with the lightning rush. Ignite can be pushed onto there is flash. Will Faker go in for the all-in? If he flashes in, he risks getting hit in the face by a Shuriken. One more auto attack, Faker. Thinking about the flash, of course. Counter flash available there for Kane. Baker hits level four. He's gonna have a big health advantage here over Kane, but Kane will sustain in the lane. <laughs> uh, Faker, though, ugh, not a probably not a fan of my uh, my rhyme game. But uh, underneath turret, once again, one auto attack away from death, and with a big wave of minions pushing in here, Faker gonna get a equally large CS lead. He's trying to make Kane stop his recall back from base, and it actually will stop that. Stay in lane is going to get a lot of additional experience and gold here. Faker stops his recall as well, so... Once again, we'll have to shove this wave out while Kane goes back to base. The biggest differential, at least as early on, was CS... <laughs> in favor of Kane, but now Faker has completely turned that around and is actually the one shoving Kane underneath his turret, really just punishing him for A, not bringing teleport, and B, uh, having used this sustain up very early on, uh, the ignites both burned at the same time, but with the range advantage, or at least range harass advantage off of sand soldiers, which, you know, don't cause Faker to take damage, uh, Kane's, uh, of course, back behind his turret. This is a terrible position to be in if you're Kane. And I'm not sure exactly what he's trying to accomplish here. He might have been looking for Faker to push through the turret, but Kane is just recalling out of sight. Ward placed in the lane there by Faker just to make sure that Kane is actually completely out of there. Heads back to base and whoa, a fiendish codex by. This is the first Fiendish Codex that we've seen out of the entire tournament, and what's almost more interesting than the Codex is Kane's pickup of a Longsword and Amplifying Tome. And if you want to count the number of items to build out of that, I mean, you got Hextech Gunblade, <laughs> which we'll never see built up in time, uh, Trinity Force as well. 
but all big ticket items that you're never going to see them combined into. So for Kane's Kennen, uh, you know, Kane has been a player this tournament that has done a number of confusing things from AP Nasus to Leona picks versus Malzahar. Um, maybe not things that you would necessarily expect, but we'll see if it is good enough to win this matchup. Holy hell. Sand Soldiers, while they do evaporate a little bit more quickly underneath turret, kind of mission accomplished there for Secret Agent Sand Soldier. He's already putting the pain down onto Kane's cannon. Uh, Faker, who with the auto attack cancels just for some extra style points, recognizes he is solidly in the lead by almost 20 CS here at six and a half minutes. Faker might just win off CSing, kind of fighting himself here, just to pick up as much CS as possible. <laughs> now 50 to 30 CS, and more importantly, Faker's Azir kills turrets ridiculously quickly. With uh, the use of a rise on turrets, you get true damage on a turret just by using a skill. You can use it in between your auto attacks, so it, it's just an incredibly high damage way to kill turrets early on. And so Faker has got a lot of options. Does he win by CS? Does he win by killing the turret? I think turret kill might actually be a little bit more uh, likely. Faker will have to play this carefully. There's the flash in. He's going to get a lot of stuns there. Faker will get that Emperor's Divide, but Ignite is taking down. Is Faker dead from this one? Does have to micro behind the uh, behind the minions just to avoid this Razor Sure again. The flash in there. He's going to look for the shield. The counter kill. Ignite ticking down there, but Kennen very low as well. Faker will get a level up to level 7. Holy cow, this lane is ridiculous. Faker has already picked up a kill in this lane on my vocal cords, completely devastating them, and we'll look for uh, damage on this turret, spamming out those auto attacks, and I think he just wins the game off this. There's the uh, Arise cast on the turret, and Faker will take down game number one, some intense action. He'll spawn a turret of his own there. Winning this 1v1 versus Kane. But for bracket B-4, it's all coming down to Kane versus Faker. Kennen versus uh, Azir. And I don't think we'll actually get the opportunity to check out the uh, runes and masteries. We're just going to hop into game here in just a second. But Faker coming out in his second best of three of the night. Won a nail-biting Lee Sin 1v1. To qualify here for this, Kane playing as impressively as he is, uh, is going to give Faker a run for his money. And especially on Azir, a champion that we've already seen a ton of success being played by uh, GBM earlier on tonight. It'll be interesting to see what Kane's Azir can do versus Faker's Kennen. Kennen kind of been out of the meta for a little bit, but as far as the 1v1 goes, you don't have to worry about getting ganked. You can just go full on harass mode. Cassiopeia, so. Uh, Faker loves banning out the GG champions, and we've actually seen three Gs in his champion bans previously. That's to make sure that Cassiopeia doesn't get out of control. A Garen, Galio, and Gragas ban there for Kane, so a lot of Gs out there as far as the ban phase goes. So I'm not sure exactly what's up with that, but when it comes to the champion picks, it's going to be an Aziz uh, finals matchup, uh, whereas Kane put in work as, like we said, Leona and AP Nasus to be able to join Faker in what is going to be a battle for elimination. Winner is into the uh, playoff bracket. Loser will unfortunately be going home. So uh, this, is, uh, this is a lot of excitement behind this. Honestly, you have to kind of give a small advantage to Faker, but with Azir versus Cannon matchup. Now, really excited to see how Kane plays Azir because we've already seen a lot of Azir play from, well, spoiler alert, the guy that actually advanced to the playoffs previously. Ahead of this, from our first best of three, it was uh, GBM. So Gank by Mom had a lot of success as Azir, and he will advance for the playoffs through bracket B3.